CU Crew. Welcome back for some more episodes of the series, Whatever Happened To. Now, this episode, right, let's get into the story about Andre Rosie Brown, who y'all probably seen in a bunch of sitcoms and movies you love. He was the big guy in those roles. Now, Andre Rosie Brown was born February 7th, 1956 in Rockford, Illinois. And after graduating high school, he ended up going to the University of Montana on a football and a music scholarship. And it was also there that he got into bodybuilding. This was a big guy, y'all. Look, as a defensive tackle in college football, the man was 6'3", weighing over 270 pounds and was bench pressing 500 pounds of weight. Wow, bench pressing over 500 pounds? You know, later on, he became his size grew. He was 6'4", weighing over 325 pounds. But anyway, so while in college, right, to make some money for himself, he would play the drums for local jazz bands in the area. And that's what that's how he got the name Rosie. He got his name Rosie during that time because the glasses he wore made him look like the actor slash football player Rosie Greer, who was part of the legendary fearsome foursome defense for the Los Angeles Rams. And he was cousins with Pam Greer. But anyway, right. So Andre. So after college, he graduated with a degree in music and education. Andre, he joined the law enforcement. He became the first black police officer in Billings, Montana. Then he transferred to Seattle, Washington for a couple years, working at that police station down there. But then around 1984, he would transfer to Los Angeles and go through the Sheriff Academy because one of his best friends convinced him to come to Cali and be a cop. And when he became a cop in L.A., that's when he was dealing with some dangerous neighborhoods, you know, the violence, the gangs and drugs. But also while in L.A. being a cop, he started to see a bunch of Hollywood celebrities. He said uh, one day he ended up breaking up a bar fight that involved actor Eddie Murphy. And the crazy part is the next day after the bar fight, his picture, Andre's picture was all over the National Enquirer. And he said he felt like a star. He, he said he went to work at the police station. All the policemen at the station started clapping and saying he was famous. And once that happened, he wanted to be a celebrity. And that's when he went and got an acting agent who got him in a Coors Beer commercial as a football player. And after that, he started taking acting lessons and going to auditions. And his first big role was on the TV show Hill Street Blues as a wrestler. And then he had a part in the uh, Mike Hammer movie. But look, here's the crazy part, though. He was an actor in the daytime, but went to work as a cop in the nighttime. Wow, that's that's crazy. He was a police officer in Inglewood at that time. He said when he did the show Hill Street Blues, right? On the night that it aired, that the episode aired that he starred in, him and his partner had just ran in the house to arrest some guys that was doing drugs in the house. And when they busted in the living room, he said the guys, they was watching, watching him on Hill Street Blues. <laughs> That's crazy. He said the guys they arrested had to do a double take because they were sitting there watching him on the TV, Hill Street Blues, while they was getting hot. And one of the guys said, uh, ain't you the guy on TV right now? And Andre said, yeah, that's me, dog, bruh. Now get on the ground. <laughs> Crazy, man. Big dude, man. You want to mess. You want to mess with him, man. But a lot of the roles he started in Lando was mainly playing bodyguards because he was big. But he did do some comedy roles, too. What I remember him from is the movie Class Act with Kid and Play. He was the CEO that Kid was talking to when he was in jail, asking for his sandwich. I also remember him doing an episode on the Wayans Brothers, The Fresh Prince. He was on Martin. He was in the uh, Barb Wire movie with Pamela Anderson. He was in Money Talks, Throw Mama from the Train, Full House, Frasier. 
the umpire on uh space jam he was in a bunch of stuff though he had hundreds of credits of being in tv tv shows movies and commercials man he did a lot of stuff the longest series he did was eight episodes on the show called 413 hope street that was on the fox network and that was created by damon wayans but you know he appeared in a lot of stuff though man a lot of movies commercials and tv shows and around 2002 he retired from acting the crazy part look the crazy part is with all those acting gigs he was still a real cop in real life he was a real cop with the Inglewood Police Department in California and served 14 years there until he retired in 1998 from the police force. That's crazy. He was a cop and an actor at the same time. But you know, on July 18th, 2006, Andre Rosie Brown, you know, he died, man. And you know, the cause of death was not listed. It just said he had a short illness. That's all it said about his death. He just had a, he had a short illness. He was only 50 years old. Wow. Rest in peace, Andre Rosie Brown. Let's get into another story, right? Let's get into the story of Lou Myers, who y'all probably remember from the show A Different World as Mr. Gaines, Mr. Vernon Gaines. Now, Lou Myers was born September 26, 1935 in Cabin Creek, West Virginia. And growing up there, most of his family members were coal miners. Now, by junior high, he started playing the clarinet in music class and later got into theater. He said he used to see how his church would put on plays about characters in the Bible. That was his first experience when it came to acting, but at that time, he really didn't have a desire to act. But in high school, he ended up dropping out in the 11th grade, and he joined the military, but he did get his GED while he was there, and he started taking college courses when he was stationed in Japan. Now, after his time in the Air Force, he enrolled to West Virginia State University and got his degree in sociology and he studied drama. But after college, he wanted to pursue his dream in acting. And that's when he decided to head to New York to study theater. Now, when he got to New York, he ended up getting a job at a recreation center and he started teaching the kids how to act and do plays and stuff. But he would audition at night for stage plays and that's when he landed the role as the Reverend Mosley in the Broadway play called First Breeze of Summer in 1975. And in 1984, he was in another play called Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. After that, he ended up getting a small role for two episodes on The Cosby Show. And he and Bill Cosby became real good friends. And Bill Cosby is the one who got him a job on A Different World. That's how he got the role of Mr. Vernon Gaines on A Different World. Popular show at that time. And, you know, I still watch it. I still watch it to this day. All the reruns that come on, I still watch Different World. But, you know, on Different World, he appeared on 122 episodes as the owner of the restaurant they used to call The Pit. That's where all the kids used to hang out at. Mr. Gaines, man, I love Mr. Gaines. He was always... uh fussing at somebody on that show about his food or somebody being lazy working for him or something but he look he gave a lot of knowledge and wisdom too on that show they gave a lot of knowledge on that show different world man but he was on all five seasons on there and uh he was on there till the show ended in 1993 but you know after that he did a lot of movies too though he did the piano lessons with a, a movie called the piano lesson with Charles S. Dutton, Alfre Wooder, and Courtney B. Vance. He was in a movie called Mama Flora's Family, Bullworth, How Stella Got a Groove Back, uh, The Wedding Planner. He played Homer T. in The Fighting Temptations. He appeared in the TV shows Thea, Living Single, The Jamie Foxx Show. He was on The Eve Show. 
Malcolm and Eddie, NYPD Blue, Touched by an Angel, and many more. Then he did some more Broadway plays like Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. He did The Color Purple. And he created his own play called Just a Little Bit of Something. Plus, the Appalachian Education Initiative listed him as one of the 50 outstanding creative artists from the state of West Virginia and feature him on their coffee table book called Art and Soul. Now, Lou Myers also won an NAACP Image Award for his role as the stool pigeon in the play called King Hedley II. And he won the Off-Broadway Adelco Award for his role in the play called Fat Tuesday. He was also a musician. He loved jazz. He sang jazz. And he did blues in the cabaret show titled uh, Negro Music and Review, which toured all around the world. You know, Lou Myers, man, he founded a nonprofit global business incubation, Inc. And that's for to help small urban businesses. He did a lot, man, out of his career. But, you know, on February 19th, 2013, Lou Myers died from pneumonia. And, you know, just months before, in December, he was hospitalized for pneumonia, but was released after New Year's. But they say just weeks later, you know, after they released him, he collapsed in his house. And while in the hospital, his heart had stopped and doctors were able to revive him. But he ended up falling into a coma and he and he died, man. And, you know, Lou Myers, man, 77 years old, man. Rest in peace to Lou Myers. Let's get into another story. Let's get into the story of the beautiful and talented actress, Suzanne Douglas, who I remember from the Parenthood TV show with Robert Townsend and a bunch of other classic movies growing up. Now, Suzanne Douglas was born on April 12, 1957 in Chicago, Illinois. And she grew up in the projects, y'all. She was from the hood and it was kind of rough for her in those days. She saw a lot of violence in the streets. Look, in an interview, she said she watched her father leave the family when she was around five years old and her mother had to raise the family as a single parent. And, you know, her childhood was just, it was tough because, you know, the way she spoke, she would imitate what she saw on TV, which at the time was white movie stars like actress Julie Andrews. She used to look at her all the time. And, you know, Suzanne said her mother would, would make her articulate her words and speak with a British queen accent. And, you know, growing up in the hood, the kids would tease her. And it would beat her up all the time because she was very intelligent and smart. And the kids, they didn't think she was black enough. Wow. Suzanne said, why is it that black people who wanted an education and spoke well weren't black enough? Hmm. But she also said her family and a lot of cousins saved her from becoming a statistic because they encouraged her to be educated. They read together. They performed plays together and they always had a thirst for learning. Now, by the time she got to high school, they still was teasing her about not being black enough because she was acting, singing and dancing and doing stage plays. You know, she had goals. She wanted to be a star. You know, she said somebody even spit on her one time when she was doing a production of a play called You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Wow, somebody spit on her. That's how, man, they was cruel back then, man. But, you know, all that did was fill her fire. And now she was even more determined to become a successful actress. Plus, her mother was her inspiration, too. Because she watched her mother raise the family as a single parent. She started off as a temp worker at a bank and later became vice president of that bank. Wow, that's a great achievement right there. Now, after graduating high school, she went to Illinois State University and got a bachelor's degree and later got her master's degree in music at the Manhattan School of Music. In 1981, she made her on-screen debut 
in the movie film Pearly, which was a TV adaption of the Broadway musical. After that, she started to make a name for herself and she started to land roles in some other Broadway plays like The Tap Dance Kid, Into the Woods, The Wiz, Three Penny Opera, and many more. But it was 1989 that changed her life. That year changed her life. That's when she landed the role of Amy Sims in the classic movie called Tap with Gregory Hines and Sammy Davis Jr. She plays Sammy Davis Jr.'s daughter in that movie. And you know what? Gregory Hines fought for her to get that role because they really wanted a light-skinned woman for that role. And you know, she was a beautiful dark-skinned woman with natural hair. Everything was just natural on her. But Gregory Hines fought for her. And he, look, plus he was impressed with her acting skills. Savion Glover was a young kid at the time in that movie. Tap was a great movie. I thought that was a great movie, man. But that was her debut movie. And she did a good job because she said she never tap danced a day in her life before. It took her like a month to learn all that. Plus, by her doing that, she won an NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture. Wow. Tap. <laughs> I'm going to watch Tap, man. That movie was great. You know, I love the soundtrack, too. The song by J.T. Taylor from Cool in the Gang and Regina Bell and Etta James. The song called All I Want Is Forever. Beautiful song they did for the movie Tap. Beautiful song. Now, that same year Tap came out, Suzanne, she got married. And she also did an episode on a show called A Man Called Hawk. And, and she did an episode on The Cosby Show. After that, she appeared in a TV series called Against the Law. In 1994, she landed a role in another movie I like called The Inkwell with Jada Pinkett, Lorenz Tate, and Morris Chestnut. I used to watch that movie back in the day all the time, too. Now, that same year, she played the mother Gloria in Jason's Lyric, which is another classic movie as far as I'm concerned. That's my movie right there, Jason's Lyric. But then she starred in one of the shows, one of the TV shows I used to watch all the time called Parenthood with Robert Townsend. Now, see, what people don't know is her and Robert Townsend went to same, they went to the same college and did plays together. They've been knowing each other for a long time. She played Jerry Peterson, the wife and mother, on that show. She was a lawyer. That was a very... You know, the Parenthood, right? That was a very positive black family show. Because Robert Townsend, he was a professor on that show. And she was a lawyer on that show. And, you know, the media was trying to compare it to the Cosby show. They were trying to say it's like a version of, a, of the Cosby show. Because they were very successful parents. And, you know, the Parenthood show, it lasted five seasons. Now, also during that time, she was in the movie called How Stella Got a Groove Back. She played Stella's sister named Angela alongside Regina King, who was the other sister. In 2004, she performed in the Tony Award winning musical Hallelujah, Baby. She also went on the road singing jazz songs. She can sing now, too. A lot of people didn't know Suzanne can sing. Now, in 2015, she played Whitney Houston's mother, Sissy Houston, in the Whitney movie that was directed by Angela Bassett on the Lifetime Network. In 2019, she landed a role in the Netflix series called When They See Us, which was about the Central Park Five rape case. And that series was also nominated for a bunch of Emmy Awards. But on July 6, man, 2021, Suzanne Douglas died from pancreatic cancer. It said she was fighting for two years, but she lost the battle, man. Wow. 64 years old. She was 64 years old. Rest in peace, Suzanne Douglas. And y'all stay tuned for more episodes of the series, Whatever Happened To. And thank y'all for y'all support to my CU crew.